Hey there, CT Tinker here. In this video you will learn how to use drivers. So drivers are really cool but often overlooked because constraints are existing. So constraints are really cool. You can easily copy the rotation of the cube to the rotation of the monkey head by just adding a copy rotation constraint for example. But what to do if you want that the cube's location is affecting the monkey head's rotation. Well, then it's time to use drivers. To add a driver, navigate to the object properties, select the value you want to change up and then right click it. By example, in this case, the X rotation. And now just choose add driver. By doing so, this small window pops up and you can just start adding the expression and variables here, but I find it pretty hard to work with it, especially if you are planning to do a larger driver. So let's change up the workspace a little bit before moving forward. When working with drivers, I usually like to open the drivers editor. In here, you can see the drivers from the object you have currently selected. In this case, the X Euler rotation driver. You don't see anything in here. To see something, you have to press N and select the property. And then you actually also have to navigate to the drivers tab. In here, you see the driver type and currently scripted expression is selected. And this is usually what you want because the others do have some niche use cases but the scripted expressions deliver the most control, so this is what you usually should be aiming for. Besides the driver type, there's also the expression. And you can just think in simple mathematical operations. Those mathematical terms for the expressions are based on Python, but you don't have to have any scripting experience to use drivers, so don't be afraid. And if we move a little bit further down, we see the input variables. We can add input variables and remove them by pressing the X icon. And those input variables also have different types, like single property, transform channel, rotation difference and distance. I will focus here on the transform channel, because I think it's the most intuitive to use. But you can play around with the other functionalities. Those can come in really, really handy sometimes. If we are now selecting the cube here as object, the cube's properties can be used as driver. By example, we use the X location in world space and the name of the property here is variable. So we can copy the name var in the expression. And now the cube's location is affecting the monkey head's rotation. If we want to reduce the spinning speed, we just divide the value by 5, by example. Okay, cool. And, well, it's a pretty good practice to rename the variable input names because it can get really confusing if you don't have proper naming conditions. So I'm just changing the name to lock for location. And sometimes it's necessary to update the dependencies when changing up naming conditions. And so nothing has changed. If we want that our set rotation is now equally affected by the cube's location, we just navigate to the driver we have just added and choose copy driver. Then we can just paste the driver in the set rotation. And now we have the exactly same driver setup in the set rotation. So when I'm moving the cube on the X location around, the monkey head's rotation changes. We can also change up the space here if we like. So by example, if we want that our set rotation is affected by the set location of the cube. But there are also different ways to script the driver. For example, let's set a driver to the X location of the cube. Now you see it's nothing in there. We can even delete the variable and just focus on the expression. We can just type in frame. The scenes frame is actually a driver property. 
We can also modify this to reduce the speed, by example, dividing the frame by five. Now the cube is moving slowly in the x direction or minus frame. Now it's in minus x direction. <laughs> But we can also use sine, cosine, absolute, etc. There are a lot of different properties and you can look them up if you are interested. I'm just using sine for now. So to show this, just type in sine and put the frame divided by 5 in parentheses. And now the cube is moving forward and backward in a sine wave form. We can also increase the amplitude by multiplying this by 5. And if we want, by example, that our cube is moving in a circular fashion, we can just copy this driver here, paste it in the Y location, and change in the Y location the sine to cosine. And if we want that our cube is moving upwards, well, we can easily do this by just pasting the driver again. Now it spins around and this time we just use frame. And now our cube is spinning upwards. The cool thing about drivers is that you can basically use them everywhere. And this makes them a really great tool for animation, rigging and a lot of stuff. Well. I hope you find this useful because this is like the fundamentals to get started with drivers. And now I will show you some examples where I'm using drivers because I think they really help in my workflows. So here you can see the logo animation of Blender Track and I'm using drivers here because those can really help to speed up the workflow. I have two objects here. One is driving the rotation of those little 3D <laughs> cube like thingies and the other one is driving the location and here I'm just using some keyframes if I actually want that the spin ends slower or faster I can just move the keyframe and now those cubes are spinning faster and if I move it back a little bit the rotation ends slower Also, in Blender Track, the recording button animation is actually made by using drivers. So, if you look here, you see this little animation. And why are drivers here so useful? So, you see, I have a lot of drivers, some for the rotation and some for the scale. And those are driven by a custom property. So, I can easily slide around and define the speed. But also a modifier, in this case a cast modifier, is driven by the same value. But this is just the same principle. I have multiple things that I want to be depending on one thing and so it's actually a good idea to use a driver. And drivers can also be useful while rigging. So here I have a character and you probably know if you move your arm around you see that the shoulder moves with the arm and that's why i'm using a driver here for the shoulder if i'm disabling the driver you can easily see the issue if i'm moving the arm up and the shoulder is not moving with the arm you get some kind of weird deformation and if i'm activating the driver in this case it's basically the first example where one object's location drives another object's rotation. And here's one little catch. You can also use modifiers on drivers. In this case, I am using a limits modifier. So when I turn off the limits modifier and move the arm up, you see the rotation just goes on and on and on and on. So I say the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 0 0.7. And this limits the actual rotation and everything looks fine. And the cool thing about this is that usually while rigging, you have to set up a lot of bounds to do effects like this. And sometimes drivers can just do the work for you. And I hope you have learned something. Thanks a lot for all the support and especially to my patrons. And 
That's about it. See you around. <laughs>